Hello and welcome to my hopefully last tutorial episode about a wall slide and wall jump. Now this is the blueprint from my old project and there are many things I would like to change. Like the detect wall function, which I took from an epic games project, I believe it was this um, swing ninja, but I can't download and test it anymore. What I didn't know when I created the previous wall jump blueprints was that this input axis move right will tick all the time, so we don't actually need two detect wall functions. And within this detect wall function there is a sphere trace we also do not need in this case. There are also some things I would like to change, so to avoid confusion I will start a new project. So this is the new project and to save time I edited the blueprints in advance which I'm going to explain now. We create three boolean variables which by default are set to false. I don't like the default low gravity jump so we use the nodes from the previous project in the construction script. And this is what a new simple wall jump and slide looks like. We begin with the always ticking move right, which goes to our detect wall function. Here we set the hit wall boolean to false and start a line trace for wall static and wall dynamic objects, which are our walls in the level. This trace line starts from the center of a character, goes only forward, enters a length of 45, which should be a bit longer than the capsule radius which is 42 right now. As you can see, this red line is a bit longer than the capsule collision radius. If the length is too long, you are going to do wall slides before reaching a wall. You can always change this number for your mesh and animations. If we don't hit a wall, the boolean stays false and we end this function. But if we hit a wall, it checks the actual rotation and decides if it is on the left or the right side. We check if the actor hit a wall and if it is on air. If true, we can check if the actor is falling unless you want to slide down instead of going upwards. Then delete this branch. If any of both branches are false, then we move and rotate the actor like we would be walking. If we hit a wall and are falling down, then we check if the wall is on the left or right side. If true, we are hitting a wall on the left side. If not, it's on the right side. We check if the player input from the move right is against this wall and we check if the actor is still hitting the wall and if the actor has not reached the ground yet. If all of these are true, then we set the falling velocity. The boolean is sliding is set to true and a retriggable delay is set to something like 0.05 because with a normal delay we would need to calculate an exact number to not get small bugs sometimes. This keeps happening unless one of these three cases fails. Then there is sliding boolean is set to false and we move and rotate the actor like we were walking. The right side works the same way but with the right player input. Let's continue with the jump and wall jump. When the player presses the jump button, if the actor is not hitting a wall or is not falling, then the actor just jumps until the player stops pressing the button or the jump max hold time has been reached. But if it's true, then we check if the actor is sliding. If that's also true, then we compare the forward vector value and set the respective launch value for it. 
which is the same if we aren't sliding but we also need to change the actual rotation because it's jumping away from the wall now this doesn't include a dash jump from the wall because I have not implemented the dash system yet but you probably know how to add it if you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe and spread the word because they will only get better and there's so much more to come thanks a lot and have a nice day